Welcome back. In this part of the video, we're going to talk about the two major types of primary research in psychology, which are experimental and non-experimental research. You probably already have an idea about the difference between experimental and non-experimental research. After all, I explained experimental research in the last video. But in this video, we'll quickly review the difference between experimental and non-experimental research. And we'll also talk about the advantage and disadvantage of each type of research. So. Um, experimental research is pretty much like it sounds. It's the running of experiments. But a more specific or precise definition would be research in which participants are randomly assigned to groups. In a psychology experiment, a researcher randomly assigns participants to, to separate groups, and each group goes into a different situation or different condition. And then the researcher gathers data from the participants and hopefully arrives at some type of a conclusion. I shared an example of a psychology experiment or a possible psychology experiment in the last video. I shared an example of an experiment in which a researcher randomly assigns the participants to two groups, and one group goes into a hot room, and one group goes into a cold room, and then both groups take the same recall test. And I mentioned that the goal of that experiment would be to find out, um, or to test, if temperature has an effect on memory. If a researcher did that experiment, the researcher would want to see if the cold room or the hot room does better on the recall test. So in that experiment, the hot room could do better, the cold room could do better, or the two groups could do perform the same, or roughly the same. There might be no significant difference in performance. And um, that's one example of a psychology experiment. Um, another example of a psychology experiment might be um, a study looking at the effect of sleep deprivation on driving performance. Um, if a researcher wanted to wanted to look into that question, the researcher could randomly assign the participants to two, to, to two groups, um, ask well ask one group to go without sleep for a night, and ask the other group to sleep normally. Um, and in in the morning, the researcher could test everyone in a driving simulator to look at whether the sleep deprived group does wor uh, worse on the driving task. Um, that would be another experiment. So um, an experiment in psychology usually happens in a lab, but not always. An experiment doesn't have to be done in a lab. Um, in a, a, psych a psychology experiment could be done anywhere. It could be done in a parking garage. It could be done in a shopping center, at a restaurant, or even at the beach. When I teach this class in person, um, I usually share an example of a psychology experiment that was done in a parking garage. Actually, I usually share that example on the first day of class. and um, I'll quickly just uh, share it with you right now. So uh, in this experiment, the researcher had a hypothesis that when uh, a person is in a car and is backing out of a parking spot in a parking garage, um, the person will linger just a little, uh, little bit longer on average if the person knows that someone is waiting to take his or her spot. Um, the researcher's, um, well, the researcher's thinking was that um, if someone is waiting to take your spot, you feel that someone is intruding on your territory, and you want to protect your territory just a little bit longer. So to test this hypothesis, the researcher went to a parking garage and observed two situations. Um, in one situation, the researcher act, acted like a driver waiting to take um, the person's parking spot. And in the other situation, the researcher um, was just um, observing people backing out of their parking spaces without those people even knowing that they're being watched. And um, in both situations, the researcher uh, measured the amount of time that the drivers would stay in their cars before backing out. And it turned out that on average, the drivers who knew that they were being watched did linger a little bit longer. So maybe those drivers did feel that the researcher was intruding on their territory, and um, maybe they did want to protect their territory just a little bit longer. And that's not the only possible explanation for this finding, but it is one possible explanation. So um, that's an example of a, an experiment done in a real-world location. Um, an experiment that's done in a, a real-world location is called a field experiment. So a field experiment is a specific type of experiment that's done outside of a lab and out in the field, basically. Um, so you have lab experiments and you have field experiments. 
Um, so now let's talk about non-experimental research. In psychology, non-experimental research is all research in which participants are not randomly, randomly assigned to groups. Um, in a non-experimental study, the researcher doesn't randomly assign people, and the researcher doesn't put people into different conditions or situations. Instead, the researcher gathers information um, about how people think, feel, and behave um, in real or natural um, settings in which a researcher isn't manipulating anything. So some examples of non-experimental research in psychology are surveys, um, interviews, and naturalistic observation, which is um, observing behavior um, it, as it happens in public or real world locations. So um, if you uh, wanted to look at the relationship between social media use and self-esteem, uh, and you just create a, a survey, and you asked people um, how, how good do you feel about yourself, and how much time do you spend on social media per week, that would be non-experimental, right? You're not manipulating any situations. You're not telling people to go on social media. You're just asking people, do you use social media, and how, how do you feel about yourself? That's non-experimental. Um, so yeah, these are all just examples of non-experimental research. So um, I want to quickly talk about the goal or the purpose of each type of research. The goal of uh, experimental research is to arrive at cause and effect conclusions. That's the purpose of experimental research. So in a psychology experiment, the researcher is hoping to arrive at one or more cause and effect conclusions about behavior. So an example of a cause and effect conclusion might be temperature has an effect on memory. Another example might be exercise uh, leads to lower stress. Uh, another, uh, a third example might be um, sleep deprivation causes worse driving performance. Those are all just different examples of cause and effect conclusions. And like I said, the purpose of experimental research is to support cause and effect conclusions about behavior. The purpose of non-experimental research is to just observe behavior uh, in real life or real world situations um, and to look for themes or patterns in behavior without drawing any cause and effect conclusions. So um, the reason why cause and effect conclusions can't be reached in non-experimental research is um, in non-experimental research, the researcher doesn't have enough control over the environment to eliminate, um, <clears throat> to eliminate alternative possible explanations for the behavior. So when, when a researcher does a non-experimental study, there's more than one possible cause for the behavior that's being observed, and the researcher doesn't know which one is the truth. Um, I'll share an example, um, just so you have an idea, a better idea of what I mean. So imagine you go to a restaurant with a notebook and you observe all of the behaviors around you. If you did that, you would probably notice a lot of interesting behaviors. Um, you might see some people talking loudly. You might see some people leaving without a tip or without giving a tip. And um, you might see, well, who knows? You might see lots of interesting behaviors, but you won't be able to confidently say what's causing all of the behaviors that you're observing because there is more than one possible explanation for a lot of the behaviors. So if you see some people talking loudly, um, it could be because of they're drinking alcohol. It might be because of the loud music, or they might just be talking about a really exciting topic. Um, if you see people leaving without giving a tip, uh, it might be because the food was bad. It might be because the service was bad. Uh, it might just be because it's a hot day outside. So in a non-experimental study, like the study I just mentioned, you notice, you might notice lots of interesting behaviors, which is good, uh, but you won't know, you won't be able to confidently say what's causing um, all, all of your observations. There's uh, typically going to be more than one possible explanation. So, um, that's the difference between experimental and non-experimental research. Um, and I wanted to quickly mention that um, these two uh, types of research um, can be complementary. 
Uh, what I mean is, if it's possible, it's good to study a topic with both experiments and non-experiments. That way, um, the two types of research can make up for each other's weaknesses. Um, so imagine I go to a restaurant and I observe people talking loudly. Well, I've seen that, I've now seen that happen in a real life location. So now I might want to do a lab experiment to, in a more controlled setting to, to test whether um, the uh, loud music um, actually causes the, to uh, the loud talking. And if I did that, I would get the best of uh, each type of study. I would have observations in an actual restaurant, and I would have a experiment in a controlled setting, both on the same topic. Um, so uh, in the next part of this video, we'll talk about the major advantage and disadvantage of each type of research.